Kitco News special coverage of the Denver Gold Forum is brought to you by New Pacific Metals. We're here with Frank Holmes, CEO of U.S. Global Investors and Executive Chairman of Hive. Welcome to the show. It's good to be here. Good to finally meet you in person, Frank. I'm excited. You and I have spoken many, many times over the Is last year. Is this the first year. time we've met? Well, no, we, you and I have met in person, but first time we're doing a live interview together. Exciting, exciting. You're wearing a Bitcoin shirt at a gold conference. Isn't that like sacrilegious? People here give you dirty looks or what? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you've long advocated for both. So we'll talk about both asset classes. What is the theme of your presentation at the Denver Gold Forum? Well, it's for a lot of these uh, CEOs to, to rethink how they're telling their story, yeah. to reposition themselves in the hearts and minds of uh, institutional to retail investors and family offices, in particular the millennial investor. The influencers such as Kitco is an incredible educational platform doing interviews with all the CEOs from the whole spectrum from junior to senior mining companies. Yeah. Um, they're not going, the new investors are not going to Merrill Lynch's wirehouse to get research on these gold stocks. Uh, they're not going to uh, RBC, uh, with all respect, they're just not doing it. But all these CEOs want to get that research, but really they're using YouTube and they're using other platforms like Reddit to try to see if they can get insight and granularity on the story that you're trying to tell. And it's really respecting that digital world we're living in. And that's what drove my Jets ETF. I mean, Jets ETF went from 40,000 shares a day last year to 8 million. Yeah. It goes from 40 million to 4 billion. Right. Uh, what triggered that, that's now big institutional, is the retail. And what were they seeing? And they did their own research on the, on the internet, sort of a decentralized information, right. that after every crisis, the airlines fall 70%, then they go up 120. So they did their own research, and guess what? Buffett was wrong, and they were right. Uh, so we're seeing that the same thing in many te technology stocks. We saw a bit it in silver, but I think we have to, these CEOs have to recognize that their story is a vision of what they intend to do. It's not guaranteed or promissory, but they have to paint a picture. Yes, there's risks of volatility, all these parts, but the story is missed, so you're not attracting the millennial. Yeah. Well, your Jets ETF, the AUM grew in part due to the fact that the performance was good, right? So you no, do need no, that. You do need no. that underlying growth in the. No, what happened? No, David. That's the. No? no, that's the phenomenon. <laughs> that's the, in March, right? In April and in May of last year, it went from forty thousand shares a day to four hundred thousand, tenfold increase in volume, and the and the ETF stayed flat. Who are the new buyers of the of the fund? This was all the Robin Hood type of investors or going through Schwab, uh, in particular, TD Waterhouse. You could see TD Waterhouse dropped all their commissions uh, to attract new buyers. Yeah. So you saw in particular the, the Robin Hooders, I think something like 35,000 of them bought until June. And that ETF went from $12 average ticket right. price to 28. So if I were a mining CEO of, I don't know, a mid-tier or senior, it doesn't matter which, and you're having a meeting with me, and I say, Frank, how do I be like you? How do I get the millennial crowd to invest in my stock? What advice do you have for me? Retell your story and reposition it on all these social platforms such as Kitgo, uh, YouTube is really critical, uh, the Reddits of the world, uh, the forums. Uh, I was talking to a C CEO this morning and asked him, are you using Telegram or Signal? What is it? I mean, what, what is it? I mean, all the tech people create Telegram. They said, actually, my Frank talk is on Telegram. Sure, sure. Uh, a coin graph, it's also on Telegram. Sure. So it's another way of telling your story. They're oblivious to that. And, and that person that's going to be buying stocks and speculating, and yeah. young people should be speculating, right. versus someone my age that'd be taking big risks, yeah. but it's a younger investor right. that can that speculate. Well, they're all using different platforms to get their research. Yeah. Well, do you think the price, the underlying price of the metal, the gold, silver, needs to move first before the retail crowd starts to pay attention? Do you think it's a chicken and egg problem? Like, first you got the re you got to get the retail crowd to pay attention to drive up the price, but they're not paying attention because well, the price is just flat. But why are they buying Bitcoin? Because it's decentralized. Right. Other, what's the other reason? It's private property. Sure. What's the other reason? Because it's private property and it's portable. Right. But it's very important. So is gold. Okay. okay. Right? So where are they buying gold? Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, why? What's going on here? How come? How come gold investors, in particular these uh, companies, are they're not holding their gold? MicroStrategy comes along and, and, and quadruples the stock price, actually sixfold. Michael Saylor by saying he cannot grow his top line business faster than the money supply is being printed. Yeah. So he's going to turn around and, and use Bitcoin as a proxy. Yeah. Well, I'm a gold producer and I've got free cash flow, yeah. 100 million a month. Right. Well, why, why am I not keeping 10, $10 million of my gold? Right. That's what's going to resonate with you, okay. that investor, that you're believing with conviction that money printing that's out there is going to get a bid and you're going to see gold take off and silver take off because you're actually holding it. Yes. But you don't see that happening. The last time we had a gold holder was Rob McEwen in like 98. And guess what? He got attacked by all the big banks, gold analysts by saying, yeah. but his price went to the highest price to book value. Right. He made a lot of money with Rob McEwen. Yeah. So he's actually quite correct. Right. If you have big free cash flow and you really believe in your product, which is which is like gold or you've been Bitcoin, then you should be holding it. Well, do you think a lot of capital is flowing away from gold into Bitcoin, into cryptocurrencies? I mean, you're at a, you're at a gold forum and are you you're also the executive chairman of a company that mines cryptocurrencies. What's your pitch to the gold crowd? Well, I was at the conference in Miami. Yeah. They had 13,000 people spend fifteen hundred dollars to get in the door. Yeah. And, and then they were scalping tickets to get in, yeah. all right? That never happens at a gold conference. And their first keynote speaker is Nick Sasbo, and he goes through the history of why you wanna be long Bitcoin, but also gold. Mm -hmm. He wrote in 1997, Bit Gold Smart Contract. Yeah. He's a coder, he's a historian, and he's a lawyer. And so you have, how come all these millennials buy into all this money printing but they're saying their proxy, their bet is on a Bitcoin because it's capped at 21 million coins. Yeah. It's not gold. Right. Well, you have to reposition your story yeah. and stop selling all your gold if you have free cash flow. Right. You know, I want to talk about the miners because a lot of people here invest in the miners. You were telling me offline that they were growing for all the wrong reasons. They were making a bunch of deals since the early 2010s. You were talking about that since 2007, about all the non-accretive deals they were making. And look what happened to the share price now. The coal price is flat, but their share price continues to fall. Tell us about the deals the industry is making. Well, I, I spoke at this conference in 2006, seven, warning about the M&A work and the quants are taking over. And the quants were able to see that two companies pull together and yes, their revenue grows and their cash flow grows, but on a per share basis, their revenue declined 46% on average for the GDXJ yeah. uh, and the GDX is something like 35%. So you're, you're seeing that there was massive dilution. So then gold takes off from that point, but those gold stocks didn't. Then we have another rally in 2011, the gold stocks do this rally. And once again, you get these crazy mergers that are non-accretive. I think today they're more accretive and I think they're much today. smarter today. Absolutely. There's m much smarter mergers and M&A work uh, today, uh, but they don't tell that story. What's the difference between today and 2007? The dilution. If you take a look at the dilution of the number of shares being issued by the ETF of the GDX and GDXJ, yeah. that's why I created Go, 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 Go AU ETF because it's really focused on who has the best values per share right. each quarter right. or the royalty companies who have the best value metrics per share. Sure. And so what's happening in our world when it comes to gold and these stocks, it's much more quant driven in the analysis on doing comparative work and is much more robust. So how do you tell that story to a millennial that you are more attractive? And, and if, by the way, the, if, if I'm holding my gold, yeah. which we've done say for Hive blockchain, yeah. we hold our coins. Well, our, not only does our revenue go up because Bitcoin and Ethereum goes up, but our inventory goes from 5 million worth 130 million. Right, right. Well, that's a big balance sheet asset. Sure. But sometimes don't the seniors need to make a transaction because they're running out of reserves themselves? I mean, in other industries, maybe they have the luxury of picking accretive to, deals. But to, here a it's now, degree, yeah. to a certain degree, to a certain degree, it was lots of those mergers uh, that didn't work. I remember hearing about Franco Nevada on the royalty in Nevada, the first royalty on Barrick and Newmont's assets 30 years ago. Oh, it's going to be gone in 10 years, yeah. 30 years ago. Right. That, that two million dollar investments made them do 20 billion yeah. in, in valuation growth yeah. over time. So I, I really, you know, I, I think they have to be very selective and they do better deals. Okay. Um, I, I think if I had 
if I'm a junior, I need capital, I'm going to come to you. Uh, and I think that this market's going to change. Speaking of millennials, let's close on this. I know millennials personally who invest in jets. Tell us about the airline industry because they're probably watching this right now and they want to know what's the future of air travel? What's the future of pricing for tickets? And of course, your Jets ETF, how do you pick uh, the airline companies? What's your selection criteria? Well, for the U.S. in particular, for airlines, United, yeah. Delta, American, right. and Southwest, they dominate, they're about 65% of all passengers flying in America, which was averaging about 2 million. Now it's come back to that number. The 700,000 extra flyers are not there yet. Yeah. Uh, and that's inbound from Asia and from Europe and Latin America. America has put on these, these sort of challenges from Europeans to come into America, sure. like 14 days. And so they have to go to Mexico or Canada to come in. And that's delayed the overseas. I just flew to Sweden to see our operations uh, 10 days ago in, yeah. in Bowdoin, sold out going over to Europe and pretty well half, half full coming back in. Right. So I think it's been through a lull and, and trying to understand uh, this sort of Delta variant. But what's really profound in Texas and the data points is that those people that have died from the Delta variant, 99% of them were not vaccinated. And, and so what, what this whole drama is saying that you have a lockdown, it doesn't stop COVID from going away. Yeah. It just helps the healthcare system. Okay. So the longer the lockdowns by governments is really a reflection of how bad their networks are. Are you, are you saying healthcare. there's a correlation between the vaccination rate and airline travel? Absolutely. Okay. And the TSA publishes that every day. Yeah. So now the, the psychology of the variant coming back on Delta is such a, the media likes to go with this negative narrative uh, and it's impacted. But the TSA says, no, the numbers they're clearing every day are hitting 2 million. So we've, we're through 1.7 million. This is very important. Now Canada's open. Yeah. Porter just opened. Porter Airlines shut down for 18 months. Right. These are very positive. Also capital formation. There's been seven new companies gone yeah. public. Uh, they're in the airlines industry. Yeah. So there's something happening that's positive, but I think the psychology, the sentiment is negative over the headlines, but I think it's yeah, temporary. TSA throughput were obviously up a lot since 2020, but still not at pre-COVID levels. Oh yeah, you're not, I so just told you why. So, there's, you say, so you're saying airline travel has a lot of room to grow. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And people are speculating by putting new companies like Breeze, the guy that created WestJet, and the guy behind JetBlue started a new company for a tourist called Breeze. Right, right, right. Money came in from everywhere to Are participate. you going to invest in those companies? Yeah, I am. Okay, are you going to add that to your Jetsy? ETF? Yeah, okay. if it's the quant model, then it shows that growth. Sure. It definitely will. Let me, let, me, let me throw to you just an idea, a bearish idea. Please correct me if I'm wrong. We're never going to go back to pre-COVID levels of traveling because that's not the norm anymore. People want to stay home. They're afraid. Or maybe they just want to do work virtually. They don't like travel. What do you think? I think it's only a small portion of, of people. Okay. People Everyone want to communicate. Like There's more depression. There's more depression medicine given out than you could ever think of during COVID. Mm -hmm. People being stuck at home have aged rapidly. Uh, actually, they thought be more babies. There's more divorces. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> it's, there's going to be more? It's the opposite. Everything's sort of contrary at this time. Right. Um, but what's been good for the stock market has been the huge price discovery due to millennials coming in. That is a phenomenon. Well, one thing that was worrying me as somebody who is looking at the sector is inflation. I mean, if, if high inflation persists, your, your, your disposable income is going to be eroded away. How do I have money to travel? What do you think? Uh, I don't. That, that's, that's not an that's, argument? I don't think that. That's anecdotal. That's not uh, yeah, a big number to share with you. Yeah. Um, but I do know this, that those kids that took Trump's 1200 bucks and put it into Bitcoin made 10000 <laughs> and they did it on PayPal, and they could buy a fraction of, of it, and now it's gone up, and they can buy that holiday. Yeah. So there's no gold story like that. Yeah. There is in the crypto space. So there used to be, when I first got in the business in 1978, yeah. There were stories like that in the mining world right. where people became made fortunes on a relative basis sure. uh, of being early on exploration and success. That story is now being taken over by new technology. Sure. The new software is how do you work from home? That's a big boom. Uh, healthcare, tele telecare, uh, how you don't go to see your doctor, but you do it over, uh, over video streaming. Yeah. And the doctor does a diagnosis from there before they let you come in. Right. They're the, they're the new opportunities. I think the data point is 65% of my kids are, are going to have new jobs that are completely new 
just being created today. Yeah, excellent. Frank, nice meeting you in person. Thank you so much for coming to our booth at Denver Gold. And look up, that's how I, all these prices are going. Because <laughs> we got big inflation, David, and that's I've been right. telling you this a long time, right? right? There's, it's hidden, it's coming out. Yeah, that's right. All right, big inflation, we'll follow up on that story. And you and I are doing a live interview soon in October. Stay tuned for that on kitco.com. It'll be fun. Viewer questions are, are, are going to be submitted live and you'll be answering questions from the audience. I'm looking forward to that. Yes, that's so, great. That's yeah, going to be great. Thank you for watching Kitco News. We'll have more. Kitco News. Special coverage of the Denver Gold Forum is brought to you by New Pacific Metals.